Hi, I'm Peter Birch and welcome to my channel. Today we're going to be looking at blue tongues and in particular some cool tips to make sure that your animals are living a nice, happy, long-lived life. If you're new to my channel, welcome. Thanks for coming. Make sure you hit the subscribe button and the notification button to continue to join the adventure with me today here at Criticam. So what is your personal opinion on how you want to keep these animals? Do you want to keep them in cages? Do you want to keep them in tubs? Do you want to keep them in indoor pits or outdoor enclosures? I guess it really comes down to personal choice. And there's so many benefits that can be had from having them in different enclosures. The benefit of these enclosures here is it looks attractive and it's great to have them there and you can see them. The drawback is that these guys, when they eat, they're going to really mess this cage up and if you're feeding them wet food they're really going to basically redesign the cage and do a bit of wall painting and that's not the very nicest thing of all. So you can imagine feeding them outside, they can defecate, sometimes it can break down and be a bioactive system. Now these guys are absolutely drop dead gorgeous at the best of times. Now this guy here is an albino, blue tongue obviously. He um, he gets to live in this enclosure, which is pretty cool. Now, I keep blue tongues in all different enclosures. Now, actually, the way I'm thinking and the train of thought is changing, so we'll be changing the way we keep things here, um, probably make it a little bit more standard across the board, but we keep them in a variety of different enclosures, and we're gonna go through all that today. Uh, the cool thing about these enclosures here is you can deck them out, make them look cool, you can put a nice rock in there. Rocks are good to help wear down nails. Sometimes their nails will grow, and we need to make sure they can wear them down. Um, as long as they've got a real nice thick substrate, these guys like to burrow. So typically out in the bush, these guys hide in like long grass, leaf litter, under rocks and logs and all that sort of stuff. He's got access to food and water, and um, he's got somewhere to hide and make himself feel really cool. And you can see there's only one animal in your cage. So there's a bit of a drawback there is some of these species on how you keep them, you need to keep one per cage. So it can add up very quickly and become very, very costly. So using indoor enclosures or even rack systems to grow blue tongues has proven to be pretty efficient and it comes down to a personal choice whether or not you want to do that. Now these adults that I've got in here have come inside. These guys are all going to uh, basically spend their wintering moments inside and here's a very basic cage setup right here. You've got food, you've got water, I've got paper. Now I know paper is not something they normally have in the wild. I've got shredded paper, which they can use to burrow in. Um, I've got a hide box, and of course, I've got a blue tongue. Now, these little beauties love, and they will live long periods of time, and I've said this multiple times, and everyone's seen our beautiful girl, Charlie Brown, the blue tongue, having babies, you know, after 27 years. Absolutely amazing. But these guys will live 30 to 35 years, and possibly 40 years if we do the right things. Now, bringing them inside during the cooler, times here where we live, it gets pretty cold. And we're talking down to single digits, down to three and four degrees overnight. Very, very important to make sure that we get them out of that environment because when we're keeping them outside, they're exposed to all the weather. So we've got to make sure when we're keeping them outside that we're doing the right thing as well, which we'll show a little bit later. These guys do really well in here, like I said, they still have a little bit of feed every now and then and all the rest of it. But just like all blue tongues, the key thing that we're going to have to look at today in here, in particular because they're inside here, they don't get the opportunity to wear their nails down, is we're going to trim down their nails. Now, just like all animals, the nails continue to grow. Sometimes you get scratched, that's a problem. But it's not the problem in this case. The unfortunate thing is if the nails grow too long, it'll actually cause the toe to rotate and slide around and make the feet work a little bit differently to the way that they're designed. So we need to um, be very cautious of that and we need to trim the toenails. And I mean, it's just something you need to do once or twice a year just to make sure that the toenails are kept nice and check and that the toes of the animal can be staying in check and that the animal can still do what it needs to do. And that's it for here. So we're gonna go and have a look at how we keep some blue tongues in pits, indoor pits. These are the indoor pits I use. They're basically a raised garden bed. Now, 
40 centimeters or 400 millimeters is the key number. Anything smaller, you're gonna end up with problems. Trust me, I've tried it. I had 30 centimeter ones and had a couple of babies escape. That is a pain in the bum. So these guys can't escape from these 40 centimeter high pits. They're a great construction, metal making nice and easy to clean. And for additional heating, as you can see, I've got temporary heating here where you can put a stick and hang a light above. Now, this particular cage here, nice little pit. You can see right under the heating, we've got something nice. It's a nice flat rock surface that allows the heat not only to come down and heat the rock so they can get belly heating from below, but they can also get heating from above. So shingle backs need a lot of heat and that's the very core essence of these guys' existence. They're heat absorbing little monsters. Now, these pits, Basically, I've got a marine sheet of ply underneath. In the future, we're gonna add wheels to them so we can move them around and chase the sun and do lots of other things. The other cool thing that we've done in here is you scrape back the straw and we've got AstroTurf. Basically, a synthetic turf or a synthetic grass that you can put in and cut in top. So basically, when these guys defecate and it gets caught in here, we can pull it all out, strip it all down and give it a really good clean and then we can put it all back together, put all new substrate back in there. Nice bowl of dry food and always a good source of water and somewhere to hide. Now, I really like these pits, particularly for raising baby blue tongues. And of course, some of their little friends, the shingleback lizards. Here's one of the little beauties right now in shed. Look at that. Now, if, if, a blue, if a shingleback isn't the cutest thing you've seen in your in life, then um, I'm pretty sure we can't be friends anymore. Look at these gorgeous little critters right here. All just chilling out, hanging out together. Now, the cool thing about the shinglebacks and the blotched blue tongues is they get along very, very well. So compatibility is a big thing when you're keeping blue tongues, especially if you're gonna keep a few blue tongues together. Now, some of the species will not go well together. Trust me on that one. The northern blue tongues are not very good at living together. They um, particularly don't like each other at the best of times. So it's best not to try and keep or raise them together. You've got to separate them individually and then raise them up. And then basically you're only putting them back together for one reason, to reproduce and make more babies. Now these guys do really good. As you can see, living together. And I think one of the coolest things is the shinglebacks are one of the most placid lizards in the universe. These guys aren't very fussy at all. And in fact, these guys can live with just about anyone and get on really well. This guy has only just shed about two days ago. So it's uh, pretty incredible to see that the second one's shedding so close together. Now they're both from the same litter, means they're siblings, these two. This guy here, and old uh, Shaggy down here, look at this guy. Looks like a shaggy dog right now, doesn't it? All that skin splitting coming off there. Now that is absolutely amazing. And look at that face. How could you not fall in love with that? Absolute gorgeous. Now, like I said, we've got to make sure that they're um, compatible. You can imagine putting something else in there and they're fighting and combating all the time. That could be a big issue. Now, luckily enough, this guy's having a shed, which brings us into the next part, shedding. Shedding is one of those things. So with a blue tongue, the blue tongue will actually shed in about 50 million pieces. It's just like basically someone's cleaned off the scales off a fish in the tank and they just go everywhere, absolutely explode. The shinglebacks here typically like to shed in three or four big chunks. Sometimes, if you're really lucky, you're gonna get one big piece. Now, one of the key important facts is to make sure that all the blue tongues, including these guys, that the shed doesn't get caught around their toes or around their legs. So it'll actually constrict the blood flow. And over a period of time, no blood, no oxygen, means the muscles are going to die, that limb will die, and it basically will fall off. That is pretty tragic all in its own. But believe it or not, a three-legged blue tongue or a three-legged shingleback will live quite happily in, out in the bush. It's absolutely amazing. Now, something that's a little bit different to the snakes is that lizards don't actually have a spectacle cap. So when these guys shed, the covering on their eye doesn't come off. 
because these guys actually have movable eyelids. So that's the big difference between snakes and lizards. And um, like I said, always got to be cautious when it comes to shedding skin, not only because it's going to be messy, but um, we need to make sure that there's no skin left around their legs or their toes. Now you've got to be very vigilant and sometimes no matter how vigilant you are, and here's a shed from the other guy a couple of days ago and you can see one of the big slabs there, look at that, that's a nice big chunk. And there's his head and as you can see where his eyes are, there's actually scales on the eyelids but not actually on the eye itself. So um, you've got to be very vigilant to make sure that the skin comes off all their toes and all their legs. But sometimes you can imagine, you know, if it's getting caught on their feet, sometimes they'll actually bite their own toes to try and pull the skin off their toes. And the other scary part is if they're walking around and they step in some wet cat food or wet food and they've got a cage mate, their cage mate could turn around and nip their toe in a bit of a misidentification problem, thinking that it was uh, food itself. So we need to be always cautious about that. And unfortunately, it does happen at times and you just need to be really cautious. And if it does happen, put a bit of betadine on it. And if it does seem to get a little bit worse, then obviously the vet is your always the best port of call for these treatments. So that's indoor pits. Now, if we take a look at the outdoor enclosures, that's something different again. Right, here we are. These are my outdoor enclosures. These are basically a recycled crocodile ponds. So I used to keep a few crocodiles when I was doing mobile educational services, and um, I had quite a few crocs and had a lot of ponds. Now these ponds have been sitting dormant for a while, and what better way to reuse them than to create some blue tongue enclosures. So basically, these things are a very simplified system, very much like Joe Ball's system. Basically, we've got one section of the enclosure that's boxed off, and we've got a really deep substrate in here, allowing the animals to get deep down and feel comfortable. And as you can see, it's quite cool here in the afternoon. And these two guys are basically having a bit of a nap. So there's Charlie, my 27-year-old blue tongue, and there's Buffhead, her male. Both of them chilling out, preparing. So these guys get early morning sun, really nice, good sun, right up until about lunchtime, and then it dies off. They also get this ability to get out into this area where again we have the astroturf or fake synthetic grass which we can remove, clean and put back. Um, use some of uh, nature's gifts, some palm fronds to go in there and um, <laughs> enables them to get in there and hide and feel a little bit more secure. So we've done exactly the same thing with the blotch blue tongues. Now eastern blue tongues and blotch blue tongues very similar in a lot of ways. They can both take cold temperatures, but they can't take the really high moisture levels. So that's the reason why they need to be raised off the ground and they need to be in these sealed areas where they can stay and maintain to be dry. If they need to get out and have a drink or get wet or whatever they want to do, they can just cruise around, just like Charlie and Buffett over there. They can come out and move around in here. And it's not unusual to see the blotches coming out and basking. I mean, these guys are a very dark colored animal. And we've got quite a few in here. <laughs> cooling off. Preparing for their cooling cycle. And then hopefully they'll reproduce some more babies. So these guys are the Alpine blotch blue tongues. Where these guys come from, it actually snows. So these guys come from the base of the Blue Mountains and it snows there. So they're used to really cold temperatures. But like I say, the moisture is the problem cause a lot of skin problems and bacterial problems are a secondary thing from that so it's very important that we keep them nice and dry cold but dry so I hope you guys enjoyed today's show if you did make sure you give us a like make sure you hit me up on Facebook Twitter and Instagram until next time guys get out enjoy nature and love your animals thanks for watching Critter Camp.